gift to hear music that can preach to us and speak to us. Let us pray as we continue hearing from God now and word. Gracious God, we seek your spirit in your presence. Speak now, move among us. Let us know you are near. We pray in your Son's name. Amen. Several years ago, the UCC came up with a new banner and a new marketing campaign that was trying to build on the success of the God is Still Speaking campaign, which was even more several years ago. Its theme and main message was, Be the Church. Now, I don't think that's where Kim got her idea for this. In fact, we've talked, so I know it isn't where Kim got the idea. But this is the UCC banner, and we are a UCC church, so it felt reasonable to look at the banner as we begin this conversation uh, these next couple of weeks. The banner, under the big phrase, Be the Church, has several other phrases that those who made it associate with being the Church of Jesus. The phrases range from ones that are directly out of the Bible, such as, forgive often, love God, and care for the poor, to so those that are still very biblical, but require at least some application of biblical principles to modern language. Here I'm thinking things like, reject racism and protect the environment. Those feel pretty biblical to me, but again, you know, we don't have the environment mentioned in the uh, Bible directly. I imagine any given phrase on this banner might be more or less thought of as something led to being the church, depending on how you saw it. You'll be surprised and sure to find that I think they're all pretty good, but, you know, uh, I'm pretty homespun used to see office. But what was interesting to me about it is less the individual phrases and more the way the banner sought to stimulate creativity about what it meant to be the church, about what the church was. In many ways, our stewardship campaign this year is seeking to do the exact same thing. It asks each one of us to imagine what it means to be the church and, importantly, how we can then do things as a part of just that. For making a mistake, one of the principal core rationales behind this stewardship drive is that all of us are the church. As I sang with the kids, and we will sing in just a few minutes, the church is not a building, the church at its heart is the people. It's us. We are the ones invited to be the church. We are the ones called to live out what it means in all aspects of our lives. Because of that, I will say, I think the words of 1 Peter, even though they're written to the elders, really apply to all of us. And here are the words from 5.2. Be shepherds of God's flock, not because you must, but because you are willing as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve. Be shepherds of the flock, it says. In other words, be those who care for the gathered community, for the flock. Now, as I said, the author of 1 Peter is writing here to the leaders of the church, to the elders. But I think this calling really is one we all share. Our roles might be different from person to person, in fact, they will be, but the responsibility is ours together. We are the church. We are called to be the church together. We are together tasked with being shepherds, with caring for each other, and with caring for those around us. Our gospel reminds us of that last bit. Jesus tells us, that one of our main tasks as the people of God, not even just as Christians, for these are words directly from the Old Testament from the Hebrew Scriptures, one of our main tasks as the people of God is to love our neighbors as ourselves. And so as we discern what it means to be the church, whatever we discern it to be, and however we discern to do the work of caring for the flock, of caring for one another, we also need to do so in ways that care not just for the people who are here each week or online each week, 
but those around us as well. Because they too are part of the flock. They too are part of who we as a church are called to care for. And we do this task, as First Peter tells us, not because we must, but because we are willing. We do so because we have been loved by God, loved by Jesus, and wish to share that love in how we live and act in the world. So what does this look like? How do we act to best care for the flock, best care for each other? Well, one of the ways is through stewardship. This is not all we do, nor, not, nor all the text would call us to do, but certainly a part of how we care for the flock and each other is to share our resources. Giving our resources and even our money is not the be-all, end-all of how we care for each other, but it is a part of it. And we cannot forget that. I will tell you, I think not as much in this church, but certainly in American Christianity, we far too often want to pretend otherwise. Too often we want to pretend that what we give is not that important, and it's, it's a little bit here, a little bit there, it's whatever. And that's not exactly true. We are called to give and share as best as we can. Now again, this will be different for all of us based upon where we are in life, what our needs are, what our actual resources we can share are. Maybe it's a tithe, a very old, rooted in God's word way of giving, rooted in the ancient Israelite practices of 3,000 years ago. A tithe was 10% of income. Maybe for you it's a lower number. Budget's tight and bills are high and 1% is all you can give. Okay. Or 5. Somewhere in between. Maybe we give in a way that gives all of our discretionary giving to St. John's. Or maybe the amount that we can give is sort of spread out with much to St. John's. We do have bills too. But also giving gifts elsewhere. I will not tell you that gifts to Safe Passage or for the Food Pantry or directly to OCWM or any of a hundred other nonprofit organizations counts less. I won't tell you that because they don't. We give in the ways we can give based upon how the Spirit works in our lives and giving our resources our very real physical resources is a part of how we are the church together. Because, well, if we are the church together, if the call to care for one another is all of ours, then while compiling those resources for our mutual work is logically a part of that. For me, that's one of the main reasons to give to St. John's. We give to St. John's, I give to St. John's, so that together we can fund the work St. John's is doing. We give to St. John's because we value the ability of our gathered community to do ministry, to ministry together, to lead mission projects, to support crop, to lead us in inspiring worship, to educate our youth, to educate and visit with our adults. We give to St. John's because we know that in order to accomplish the work we want to do, we need real money to do it. And because we have the ability and the gifts to share. We are the church together and strive to be the church. And because of that, we must be willing to share out of our purses, out of our wallets, for the sake of our communal ministry. It is an important part of what it means to be the church. We cannot deny it. I will invite you as you begin this stewardship time to think carefully and prayerfully about how you can share monetarily with this congregation because it matters and it makes a difference. And again, I'll note here, y'all have been pretty faithful in the past, so consider this not so much a preaching to change, although hear what you want to hear, and more a reminder to keep doing what you've been doing well previously. 
But as we begin this stewardship time, I also want to remind you that while money is important, so are other ways to serve. Kim already said it in her time. We give not just of our money, but yes, of that too, but also of ourselves. Your pledge cards this year include ways to volunteer, ways to pledge not just money, but also time. Ways to pledge not just to write a check, but also to give of yourselves. And this is of equal importance to the monetary gifts that you give. Not more important, and certainly not less important, equal important. Together, they do the work of the church. We need gifts of treasure, but we also need gifts of time. We need to give what we can for our mutual ministry as the congregation of St. John's UCC. But we also need people who can use their gifts to serve on council, on committees. We need people who can teach Sunday school or help visit our homebound members. We need people who can tend to our spaces as custodians, hi Jan Foy, or as trustees, or to help care for the flowers and the plants outside. We need the people who do beautiful work on our altar table and liturgists to read and worship and acquire to sing and eventually, I hope, bell choir to play. We need people who can prepare meals and people who can deliver them. We need all of these so-called little things to be done because they too matter to make a difference. So let me tell you a story about Dan. I don't know Dan, never met the man, but he was the subject of a song by one of my favorite songwriters, uh, the Reverend Brian Sergio. And I hope to sing this song for you this morning, but somewhere along the way I lost my book of sheet music from Brian Sergio. I'll get it back. I'm going to buy a new copy of this, probably this week uh, for future songs. So I can't sing to you about Dan, I'll just tell you about Dan. Dan was a man in the church who never had children, but he loved the gift that children were to the church. So one day, Dan decided that he needed to show that love in a way that was small but doable for him. At this church, the children would be dismissed halfway through the worship service to go to Sunday school, and Dan started getting up with them. He would get up when the children were dismissed and go to the Sunday school tour where he would greet the children with a smile and a pleasant good morning, hoping that his presence and his smile would be a beacon of God's love to them in some small way as they began their Sunday school lessons. And he was right. For 40 years, he performed this ministry. And for 40 years, he touched more lives than he could count. How do we know? Because when he died, the children of the church, now adults, all came back to testify to how much those smiles, those greetings, meant in their lives. The children of the church, now grown, came to remember the man who showed them love and grace for so many years. Because his ministry of simply greeting kids with a smile made a difference. That is being the church. That is what caring for the flock can look like in action. And it is this, in ways big and small, in ways that include monetary gifts and other small and not small, small ways we act, that we are called to this day. We are called to as we strive to seek to be the church. Friends, we are the church together called to respond to that as the hand of Jesus Christ, called to care for one another, to reach out to those in need around us, to be the people of God through whom God works in our community and in our world. We are the church, called to be the church, to share our resources and to live our lives in a way that seek to show love. We are called to seek to be like Dan, loving others in those seemingly small ways to make a difference. Let us be the church today. Let us be the church every day.
Amen.